Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Gustavo, thanks the UCROSS um, network, and of course, uh, uh, the Catholic University of Leuven. Well, uh, I want to present you a wide perspe perspective view of the EU and Brazil relations um, from a Brazilian point of view, of course, in times of change, both uh, uh, domestic in Brazil and uh, abroad. Uh, this presentation has four uh, uh, moments, four topics. Uh, first one, some more historical view of Brazil relations with Europe. The second one, where I touch in the Brazil-European Union agenda and some of the driving force behind it. A third moment, uh, one point uh, that I, I consider very important is uh, uh, cooperation in the defense and international security realm. And finally, a few words about the, uh, uh, what Gustavo classified as a, a brand new government in, in Brazil and uh, uh, some perspectives of unfolding issues in the relation between Brazil and Europe and specifically with the European Union. Well, uh, it's important to mention that Brazil has a deep historical cultural relation with Europe. Brazil is a former Portuguese colony, so we speak Portuguese over there. Um, throughout the 19th century, Brazil had very uh, uh, important ties with UK, both on trade and uh, uh, regarding financial uh, questions. And also we had uh, an important connection between the Brazilian Navy and uh, the Royal Navy throughout all the 19th century and the early uh, 20th century too. Uh, regarding to France, we also have a, a very long history of cultural uh, um, uh, relationship. It's important to mention that uh, the Brazilian elite throughout the 19, uh, early 20th century, the Brazilian cultural elite, all of them uh, uh, used to talk French, some of them used to study uh, uh, at French universities, and uh, a very important mission from uh, uh, France uh, was sent to Sao Paulo to create the first large university in Brazil. It's important to mention that uh, Brazil has a past of uh, uh, um, colleges, independent colleges, and the first universities in Brazil uh, uh, different from uh, uh, Hispanic-speaking uh, uh, countries from uh, the New World, uh, Brazil has a very recent tradition of universities. Uh, uh, higher education uh, during the colonial times uh, uh, were concentrated only in Portugal, not in their colonies. So the French uh, uh, played an important role in, in helping Brazil to develop a large university in Sao Paulo. They also played a very important role in helping the army, the Brazilian army, in the, 19, uh, uh, in the, in the early 19, uh, 20th century uh, to modernize itself and to acquire uh, the dimensions of a, a 20th century uh, modern army. And finally, it's important to say that Brazil also has uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, language and cultural ties with Germany and Italy because throughout the 19th century and early 20th century, Brazil was the third uh, uh, country in the New World to receive uh, uh, immigrants from Europe. We have uh, the United States, Argentina, and then Brazil as the, the, uh, the host for immigrants from Germany and from Italy. So we have large uh, 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 Italian descendants and German descendants uh, communities in South Brazil. It's important to mention that uh, uh, the diplomatic service and cultural service from both from Germany and from Italy uh, uh, has important ties with these communities in, in Southeast and South Brazil even today. Well, uh, it's also important in, the, in this 
first uh, uh, moment of the lecture to point out uh, that Brazil uh, is historically, historically committed with a uh, rule-based international order. Uh, for a long time, Brazil was uh, uh, present at the Hague Conventions, at the League of Nations, was one of the uh, founding members of the UN, of the uh, uh, Organization of the American States, of the World Trade Organization, and so forth. So Brazil is not, a, although often is, is described as an emerging country, uh, Brazil is not a newcomer in the international stage. Brazil has a long tradition of international uh, presence. If, of course, not F, uh, uh, a major power, but has a long presence. And uh, uh, it's important to mention in this first uh, uh, historical review, uh, as a country with no significant uh, military power, Brazil usually sees the multilateral organisms and regimes as a way to grant governance and avoid injurance from the major powers. So this is a point of uh, uh, convergence with what is to be later the European Union. That's why, uh, in my perspective, Brazil supports uh, has a long history on supporting multilateral institutions and uh, 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 as a way for grant uh, uh, international governance and at the same time supporting a traditional and strict concept of uh, sovereignty. Besides that, uh, it's important to, to point out also that Brazil has uh, uh, what we call the, the mantra of the uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs. That's it. The respect of autonomy, the self-determination of the peoples, and the peaceful uh, resolution of conflicts. Those are, for many, many years, uh, sorts of a, uh, 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 the core values of the Brazilian uh, diplomacy. And, of course, it's uh, uh, a, common, a common ground with the European Union. This uh, uh, perspective on respect uh, of sovereignty, autonomy, self-determination and peaceful resolution of, of conflicts uh, has a fun uh, is functional to a country like Brazil because it allows, by one side, Balancing the, the major powers, who have uh, uh, the power to act using the force, and sometimes hedging with different powers. Brazil usually makes uh, uh, sliding uh, uh, movements, approaching and getting distance from one power to another throughout the time. Uh, I can talk about this later in the question and answers if you wish. Well, uh, it's also important to mention in this first uh, uh, historical uh, review that Brazil has a permanent uh, uh, representation uh, since 1960 in uh, uh, the former uh, uh, European community, com community and later uh, as uh, uh, European Union. Uh, in the 1990s, when uh, uh, European Union uh, 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 start to exist as an entity. Uh, also, Mercosul or Mercosur starts to exist on, uh, as a, an entity. And since the very beginning, in the 1990s, uh, um, uh, both uh, uh, institutions have uh, official, official channels of uh, communication and interaction. And finally, in 2000, uh, 2007, uh, uh, Euro, uh, European Union uh, and Brazil signed uh, what it's called a, a strategic partnership. It's an important initiative a decade, uh, in the last decades to try to uh, 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 improve the convergence and the, the, uh, the common ground and promote interests, uh, 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 shared interests between 
not exactly Mercosur and uh, uh, EU, but Brazil and EU. So, uh, 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 with this backdrop, uh, uh, we can say that uh, the Brazil European Union relations can operate at different levels throughout the time. We have uh, a bilateral level with a, a long history between Brazil and uh, some specific uh, uh, European countries. We have uh, uh, another sort of bilateral or asymmetric bilateral uh, uh, relation between Brazil and EU as a collective entity. And finally, we have uh, 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 inter-regional uh, 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 relation between Mercosul and European Union. So, uh, what is, uh, uh, in my uh, uh, view, the most uh, uh, striking topics of the EU-Brazil agenda and what are their uh, uh, driving forces? In my understanding, uh, probably the most uh, uh, permanent issue in the, in, the, in the agenda is trade. Uh, recently, uh, uh, Mercosul and the EU signed a, a FTA, a free trade agreement, not yet uh, uh, implemented, but uh, uh, it probably will not finish this long history of trade negotiations. But since the very beginning, uh, the, the issue trade is on, on the agenda. But uh, there are also issues related to international govern governance, like human rights, democracy, poverty, international stability or peace, and uh, uh, science and technology cooperation, and, and uh, also the defense of the uh, uh, multilateralism or the multilateral institutions. Well, uh, what moves those uh, uh, different actors to uh, uh, this agenda and what they uh, um, uh, want of, of that? Well, uh, the most, uh, uh, in, in the surface, the, the, the the issue that, uh, uh, the topic that drives uh, uh, this agenda is access to markets, to both sides. Brazilian, uh, um, uh, Brazil wants to get in the EU uh, uh, markets, especially uh, the Brazilian uh, uh, so-called agribusiness. And in the other hand, uh, sectors of uh, uh, service, banks, and uh, financial and other kinds of investments and uh, wants also to get access to the Brazilian market. Well, uh, besides, we also have uh, in the Brazilian sides, uh, the, the Brazilian sides, uh, uh, expectation of uh, uh, investments from Europe. Brazil, despite the, the, its geographic size and despite the fact for, of being one, one of the largest economies of the country, for in the last uh, maybe 30 years, Brazil is uh, uh, ranked between the fifth, 15th, fifth, 15th largest economy or the fifth large economy. Uh, in the world has a, a market of more than 2 million, uh, uh, 200 million uh, uh, people. Uh, but despite of that, uh, Brazil has uh, serious problems of get uh, uh, resources for heavy uh, uh, investments. So to get investments from abroad, it's something that different administrations have been uh, uh, trying to get for a long time in Brazil. So investments, technology transfers, uh, Brazil has a gap on technology that is very important. Brazil has leadership in some issues like uh, uh, tropical agriculture, odont odontology, but 
uh, uh, related to engineering and manufacturing and uh, um, uh, the new economy. Brazil lags behind, very, very behind. Uh, so technology transfer, and it's important, uh, recently in the 21st century, uh, the recognition as a global player, not only as a Latin American country or a region, uh, regional uh, uh, leader, but as a, a global player. So close ties with EU could, could grant to Brazil the credential of a global player. That was in part the expectation. In the other hand, European Union has uh, uh, as a driving force to engage with Brazil, uh, uh, it's part of um, a, a larger uh, movement of engaging with the so-called emerging, uh, emerging nations. Uh, for some time, uh, especially at the time of the, uh, uh, the strategic partnership were, were conceived and, and start to be implemented, um, there were expectations uh, in Brussels that uh, Brazil could be a potential partner in the multilateral negotiations. Well, of course, there are some limits of, uh, uh, important limits of those driving forces and some set, uh, 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 setbacks on these relationships. Well, uh, it's hard to coordinate, to get uh, coordination between uh, uh, Brazil and the collective actor that is the European Union. By one side, both, uh, uh, both, both sides have multiple partners and uh, multiple commitments, often contradictory ones. So, the uh, European Union signed uh, uh, strategic partnerships not only with Brazil, but all with the BRIC members and also has uh, uh, its issues and interests uh, uh, with the G7 and with NATO and with other uh, 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 partners and agendas. In the other hand, Brazil also has its uh, other partners. Brazil is member of the BRICS, it's member of the G20, it's uh, 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 one of the, the founders of the UNASUR and MERCOSUL and so forth. So uh, the, the points of contact between EU and Brazil, it's only one part of a large gear, uh, uh, one cog of a, a large uh, 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 gear wheel. Well, uh, of course there are trade uh, uh, disagreements between uh, those two partners and I can talk a little bit more about that later and uh, uh, it's important to, to, to highlight there are uh, despite the convergence despite the, fa the fact that Brazil is a, 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 West, a Western country and share a common heritage with uh, uh, Europe Brazil has a uh, uh, very different views about, about very important issues to Europe. Views uh, related to the reformation of uh, UN, IMF, World Bank, issues uh, related to human rights, especially responsibility to protect, and of course Brazil still holds or used to hold until uh, a very, uh, a very uh, uh, a short time ago, a very traditional uh, uh, view about sovereignty and use uh, uh, the force uh, to uh, uh, in, in the international uh, uh, stage. Well, but it's important to to, to highlight that um, there are very important uh, uh, points of convergence and. Um, uh, uh, a common ground to, to work with, even though uh, there are these different views. 
So uh, Brazil has been engaging in peacekeeping operations since the end of the Cold War with a, a very, very uh, uh, strong um, uh, uh, footprint and recently uh, engaged with different, uh, in a bilateral level, it's important to mention, but engaged with uh, uh, different uh, uh, European Union uh, um, um, members uh, in important uh, projects of military modernization of the, the Brazilian platforms. So I'll, I'll uh, give you three uh, uh, examples very shortly about the, this uh, 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 cooperation in the fields of defense. One for each uh, uh, service. So for the Navy, we have the so-called prosub, uh, uh, the, the development of new, a new class of uh, diesel electric submarines and uh, uh, a nuclear, nuclear powered submarine in cooperation with France. It's a seven billion million billion uh, uh, euro euro uh, uh, project, and uh, the, the the project consists in to build four uh, uh, conventional submarines and a fifth uh, a nuclear powered submarine. The first of the uh, the the first sections of the first submarine start to be built to be built in France, and then it was ferried to Brazil where uh, a large facility were built uh, uh, by uh, a joint venture with the Naval Group and Odebrecht Defesa e Segurança in Rio to build uh, uh, this facility meant to be a shipyard, a maintenance center and a naval base. And well, uh, uh, the first submarine starts to make its sea trials uh, uh, early this year. For the Air Force, we have uh, an important uh, a partnership with Sweden, where Brazil is not just uh, purchasing 36 uh, uh, Gripen new generation uh, uh, fighter jets, but it's co-developing uh, uh, these new uh, versions of the, the, the Gripen. It's a 4 billion euros pro program, and it's meant to be, uh, 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 it's important to mention, it's meant to be a co-development, and one of the object, uh, one of the intentions of the Brazilian military is to acquire new technologies in uh, both on, on naval technology and airspace technology with those projects. And finally, it's a more simple project, but also very, very ambitious, is the Guarani. It's a wheeled armored uh, vehicle for the uh, infantry of the army, uh, building with, uh, in a partnership with uh, uh, Iveco, uh, Italian uh, heavy uh, vehicles uh, uh, manufacturers. And it's meant to, to build more than 2,000 uh, uh, armored cars. So, uh, there are uh, Th those projects really call the attention of the international uh, uh, business community and uh, some of these uh, uh, programs may uh, represent uh, uh, a new balance of force in South America and if the, the nuclear powered uh, submarine uh, be completed and start to operate it will uh, uh, really make a, a difference for the, for the Brazilian Navy as a, a real, uh, uh, as a navy with real dissuasorial uh, um, capacity. But uh, it's important also to say what are the driving forces behind uh, uh, those th those programs. For the Brazilian side, it's well the weapon systems per se, the technology, and the program to re uh, reboost the Brazilian. Uh, um, uh, military industry, defense industry. To EU countries, it's important to say that those programs represent um, budgets, represent uh, jobs, represent sales, and it's very important. Uh, um, as this pl those platforms 
are meant to, to, to last for 20 or 30 years. So it represents uh, maintenance and spare parts contracts for 20 or 30 years. So it's in, uh, a very important uh, uh, contract. Are, they are very important uh, contracts. Well, uh, deliveries are, are happening. Uh, the first, the first jets uh, uh, are being tested. As I said before, the first, uh, first um, submarine are in the sea trials, and the first uh, armored vehicles are already deployed. But all, there are also some important setbacks on those programs. Uh, we have some delays uh, uh, caused by uh, uh, Brazilian budget cuts, and especially due to the fact that uh, uh, Brazil passed uh, uh, and a constitutional amendment that uh, put sort of a ceiling for the public spending for the next 20 years. So it puts a very big question mark about the, the uh, defense ministry budget for the, the future. And probably uh, in what regards to technology and the acquiring of new technology and the, the scale of the defense industry in Brazil, a very important shift have, ha has happened uh, uh, early this year. The Brazilian um, uh, airplane manufacturer Embraer it's the fourth larger uh, uh, airplane manufacturers in the world, has been taken off by Boeing, the larger man airplane manufacturer in the world. So uh, it's important to mention that the, the merge that uh, uh, was uh, uh, negotiated split it in Braer in two companies. One is the one that, one that Boeing has acquired, is the airliner. But uh, uh, Embraer Defesa e Segurança, uh, the, the sector of Embraer uh, uh, devoted to produce military uh, uh, airplanes and uh, uh, business jets, were not acquired by Boeing. So there is a, a very big question mark about what's going to happen about the now the, the small Embraer Defesa e Segurança and business, and if it will have enough revenue to go on with the co-development of military aircraft with uh, uh, Sweden. Well, and finally, I'd like to uh, make a few brief, uh, a brief commentary about the new government in Brazil. It's about, it's not that new, it's about to make one year uh, in a few weeks. And as you may know, it's a far-right, uh, 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 we have a far-right president who is also an apologist of the military dicta dictatorship, what of course puts a strain on the EU core values and in the convergence agenda with the Brazil. So, uh, Besides that, uh, I'd like to, to highlight some of uh, uh, statements from the new government to understand uh, what kind of shift is going on in, in Brazil. First of all, uh, it's important to mention that the, the new government uh, uh, made a sort of self-proclaimed uh, alignment with the United States. Uh, I would say not exactly with the United States, and, but more precisely with the outright and the personal figure of the United States President, Donald Trump. Um, what can be very, very uh, uh, problematic. Prob problematic. Uh, uh, second, the, the second point, uh, um, the, the President at, uh, at the UN made uh, a declaration uh, uh, stating that UN has supported enslaved labor of Cuban doctors in Brazil. It's, it's a very uh, uh, inaccurate uh, uh, statement, but uh, it reflects uh, uh, part of the debate that is going on in the public opinion, and especially in the digital sphere 
in, in Brazil. Um, and we have the, uh, what I'm calling a new anti-systemic rhetoric in Brazil. Uh, uh, if you allow me, I'm going to quote the, um, a, a few lines of the swearing-in ceremony discourse of the Minister of uh, um, uh, Foreign Affairs of Brazil, Ernesto Araújo, who says the following. Remember the homeland. I'm quoting, okay? Remember the homeland. It is not, remember, it's not remembering the international order not remembering what the latest foreign affairs article or the New York Times says. It is to remember the homeland as an essential reality. We are not here to work in the global order. Here is Brazil. Itamaraty, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, exists for the Brazil. It doesn't it, is, it does not exist for the global orders, and so, so, so forth. It's a, it's a very, uh, uh, I never saw this kind of rhetoric in the Brazilian uh, diplomacy. It's important to mention that uh, the ministry is uh, uh, a professional diplomat. Uh, it's, it's very awkward, okay? Um, well, uh, and we also have uh, uh, in, this, in those uh, rhetoric, uh, rhetoric battles, the, uh, uh, the issue of the fires and in the Amazon rainforest. Um, that, well, uh, everybody knows uh, 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 what happened and the, the way of uh, uh, the government reacts, denying the facts, and uh, um, uh, uh, saying that the data were inaccurated or uh, manipulated by a large conspiracy and so on. Well, despite of that, um, I would say that uh, the new government uh, have been uh, uh, suffering sort of a reality shock. Well, uh, uh, the proclaimed alliance with the United States didn't, didn't uh, bring uh, uh, consistent uh, advantage to, the, to Brazil or to the government itself. itself. Uh, the President Bolsonaro tried to, to appoint his, his son for uh, uh, a position in Washington and failed. And uh, uh, it's important to say that um, uh, uh, Despite the, uh, uh, the signing of the agreement between EU and, the, the, um, uh, uh, and Mercosur on free trade, France uh, uh, has, uh, the French has uh, uh, declared that they uh, uh, will, will not rati uh, ratify. So, uh, we can uh, think that some adjustments may be made by the, the Brazilian government. If we, if we see, uh, if we read the BRIC summit uh, declaration, we have a much more um, a traditional rhetoric in this, in this declaration. Uh, and uh, it's important to say that uh, uh, China uh, despite the, the former discourse of the government, the government became uh, an important uh, trade partner and the government is dealing with that, not in an ideological way, but in a more pragmatic way. And finally, uh, uh, the vice president made a, a statement very interesting to the Brazilian, uh, uh, the, to a Brazilian business association, where he says that Africa may be a gateway for the internationalization of the Brazilian companies. So, it's a, a very traditional and uh, uh, um, uh, strategic and pragmatic perspective of how Brazil traditionally uh, 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 presents itself in the international stage. Well, if there are some adjustments, uh, I believe that bilateral relation with the European Union 
union members, probably will be will prevail with narrow uh, with a narrow focus agenda in issues that works like uh, 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 military cooperation. Uh, although I do not expect uh, a convergence with uh, uh, the normative uh, uh, principles of the European Union. I, I believe that this is, will be a field where we will see a lot of friction between Brazil and the European Union in, in, the, for, uh, the, 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 uh, in the future. So, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, uh, Gustavo is also uh, <laughs> waving me that it's time to, to, to finish. I'd like to thank you and uh, uh, we could discuss more in the question and answers. Thank you very much.